Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Soul Silver. In the last part, we found all the Day of the Week siblings and did all the rematches against the Johto gym leaders, and now it's time for us to do that against all the Kanto gym leaders. You might notice, by the way, in the bottom screen that for some reason, my Johto gym leader numbers are missing. I'll talk more about why in a moment. Hello? What's up? I'm doing great. Hey, it called just the right time. I'm free right now. Wanna battle me again? Yes. All right, all right, I'm looking forward to it. I'll meet you at the Fighting Dojo in Saffron. I won't be at the Peter Gym, all right? Don't get confused. So the reason that the Johto Gym Leader's numbers is missing is the same reason as why my Pokemon are all now lower level than they were at the end of last part. For some reason, when I looked in my files to about to edit this video, the original footage I had recorded for this segment was gone. Uh, in its place was just a copy of the Johto Gym Leader rematch footage. So, I had to completely re-record the Kanto Gym Leaders, and I didn't feel like going to get all the Johto numbers again as well, or refining them as well, so we're going more or less from where we were at the beginning of last part level-wise here, which is a little rough, but oh well. Either way, time for Brock. Starting off, he had a Golem with Sturdy, Sandstorm, Rock Slide, Rock Polish, and Earthquake, but now he's got a Relicanth with Rock Head, Head Smash, Aqua Tail, Earthquake, and Rest. Relicanth is a weird Gen 3 Water Rock type Pokemon. Uh, so it's weak to Fighting, Ground, Grass, and Electric. Grass is a four times weakness. It's got an extraordinarily high physical defense and HP stat, and its attack isn't too bad either. But in Gen 3, when Rock was old, while well, Rock was physical type, but the Water type was not, so you really couldn't get... You could only really effectively use half of its type, essentially, is what it came down to. A much better Pokemon, on the other hand, is Brock's Rampardos. Mold Breaker for its ability, so abilities just won't work around it usually. Earthquake, Stone Edge, Avalanche, and Rock Polish. This thing can be tanky. Rampardos itself is the evolution of the one of the two Gen 4 fossil Pokemon at level 30. Uh, pure Rock type, so it's weak against Fighting, Ground, Steel, Water, and Grass. Very high physical attack and decently high HP. For early game, uh, as early as you can get one of those in the original Gen 4, at least. That's a fantastic Pokemon. And we're just kind of speeding through the rest of Brock's Pokemon. The rest of there was a Kabutops with Battle Armor, Rock Slide, Aqua Jet, Endure, and Giga Drain. An Almost Star with Shell Armor, Protect, Sandstorm, Brine, and Ancient Power, and Onyx with Sturdy, uh, Stealth Rock, Rock Slide, Rock Polish, and Sandstorm, and that's Brock. We are speeding through these pretty quickly, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I do believe in order to call Brock, it had to be a Saturday night, and for Misty, it has to be a Wednesday morning. Hi. Oh, hi there. What's happening? Everything's good with me. Oh, hi. I'm free today. Let's battle again, okay? Sure. Okay, so I'll see you at the at the, 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 the Saffron City, the, the, the Mega Man. Find the media, you'll find Dr. Wowie. Wow. These fights are going to go by pretty quickly until blue overall. So here you are. Don't make me wait. I've heard a lot of good things about you since our last battle. Let me test how good you are. Misty starts off usually with her Starmie again. Natural cure for its ability, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Psychic, and Surf. Afterwards, in most cases, in my experience, she tends to send out her Quagsire. Uh, Water Absorb, Brain Dance, Amnesia, Water Pulse, and Earthquake. After those two Pokemon, she usually sends out her new ones. Starting off, we got a Floatzel here. This evolves from uh, Buizel at level 26. This one's got Swift Swim, Agility, Waterfall, Ice Fang, and Baton Pass. Pure Water type, so it's weak to Grass and Electric. Floatzel has extraordinarily high speed, a very high physical attack stat, and a special attack stat and HP that can't exactly be laughed at either. For a relatively early game Water type in Gen 4, this is fantastic. The biggest problem with game with Pokemon like Floatzel is that, for the campaign at least, you get them so late they're just not going to be of any real use. But that's a thing of what you consider the campaign. Like, if you like to do all the optional side stuff, including actively grinding to get max, uh, prints, so to speak, for things down the line, a lot more Pokemon can get a lot of use, but for my sake, it's just not worth the effort in a lot of cases. Like, I'm really curious how Gen 9's going to handle its side content because of that. Next up, though, Misty's sending out her next new Pokemon. This is her Milotic, Marvel Scale for its ability. Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Rest, and Sleep Talk. Marvel Scale ups the defense, I think, by like 50% of the Pokemon in question, uh, if they are under a status ailment. Milotic, in general, is a Generation 3 water type. It's a rather unique one in its evolution that prior to a certain point, uh, you need to get one of its contest stats up to max from its previous form to evolve it. Uh, pure water types, so it's weak to grass and electric. 
Milotic has a great special defense stat and a good special attack stat as well, and okay HP and speed. The biggest problem is finding one of these in the earliest gens it was in was genuinely a hellscape. Uh, because the way it originally worked in its introductory gen was on the specific route you could catch it. It selected about mm, four or five spaces randomly for you to fish in for it to spawn. Uh, once they started going 3D though, finding one of these was made at least a little bit easier. Uh, because you just had to be in the water in the specific region. I'll always remember my low tech for one thing though. Uh, back when I was playing Gen 4 when it was new, the last Pokemon I needed to see to complete just the Sinnoh regional decks around the 150 Pokemon that just main Sinnoh had. Milotic was the last one I had to see, and, uh, well, uh, thank you, Cynthia, for just having one. Oh, also, uh, before I forget, because I know I forgot to mention one last part, uh, I forgot to mention the second speed-up theme last part was Hunter's Chance from Final Fantasy IX. Uh, the reason that we're getting two is because there's just that many to speed up. Same with this part. Uh, the first one is Fenrir, the main battle theme of the original Arts and Elico on the PS2. And the second one, uh, from memory, is Battle Pressure, I think is the name of the song. It's the tournament battle theme from either version of Mega Man Battle Network 4. My Lotic here showing a bad case with Sleep Talk, by the way, because if Sleep Talk chooses to reuse Rest, you're kind of just in a bad position. Next up, Misty is sending out her Lapras which has Shell Armor for its ability, Rain Dance, Parish Song, Blizzard, and Surf. It's arguably the least threatening member of her team. While her final member is, I guess, decently threatening, her final Pokemon is her Lantern. Uh, eliminate for its ability, which is useless in battle, Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Confuse Ray, and Surf. A good move or two can probably take that, despite its high HP stat. Two down, I guess technically ten down, six to go. Wow, you're getting stronger by... the battle. Thanks. And now it's time for us to go and call ourselves up Lieutenant Surge, who you can call on Friday mornings. As soon as we get down there. Again, Pokegears, phone number systems, biggest downfall besides the fact it makes rematching normal po trainers hard. There's no sword function. Hello? What's up? I'm doing great. Hey you, battle me again, what do you say? Sure. Alright, I'll be waiting for you in Saffron's fighting dojo. Don't be late. Cool. Hey, the promise we made. Let's battle again. Surge also has some new Pokemon this time around. But he still tends to start off with his Raichu. Static for its ability, Thunderbolt, Grass Knot, Quick Attack, and Thunder Wave. After that, he likes to be a bit of a rebel. Now he's sending out his Electivire, Motor Drive for its ability, Thunderbolt, Ice Punch, Cross Chap, and Earthquake. Quite the fatal learn move set there because it covers most of its weaknesses. Uh, Motor Drive for its ability, if you hit an Electivire or a Pokemon that has Motor Drive for its ability, period, with an Electric type attack, their speed is raised. Uh, I believe it's by one stage per time you do it. Uh, Electifier itself, though, is a Generation 4 evolution they added to the Electabuzz line. You need to trade it while it's holding the Electrizer item, which I believe we may have found one by this point. Uh, pure Electric type, so it's weak to ground exclusively. Electivir has really high physical attack and good special attack and speed on top of it. Electabuzz was okay on its own. Electivire, as well as a lot of the other Gen 4 evolutions they had, the Gen 1 Pokemon, really helped make those Pokemon strengths shine. Even if at times I'm not the biggest fan of some of the designs, namely Electivire itself, I don't like. At least not this sprite for some reason. Uh, whereas some of the other Gen 1, Gen 4 evolutions, uh, I like a lot. When I was originally going to approach doing these Gym Later rematches, I was really unsure if I'd just speed them all up and just talk about the new Pokemon when I could or not. The main reason I decided to do it like this is because it allows me to give the Pokemon that are new the same attention I've given the ones that are new in other battles. Uh, and thankfully, a set of eight gym leaders equals out to roughly 30 minutes each. So, eh. The thing I should note, though, is that this is overall probably going to be your best way of gaining levels in the game. Uh... Especially the later Kanto Gym Leaders. Blue especially is the main one there. As beating their Pokemon is usually going to be about three to 4,000 experience depending on the one. 
uh, for some of your Pokemon. So if you're just trying to boost a level here and there, experience share and all that's going to be really helpful here. Because otherwise, when it comes to gaining experience in the game, you're locked to either refighting random encounters over and over and over again, which is how I tend to grind in this game, or relying upon the, as I've criticized several times before, really bad rematch system for the random trainers around. Nowadays, that's not as much of a problem because they've changed the experience system several times since, as well as the experience share a couple times since. And I overall like the state it's in in that regard nowadays when it comes to grinding up uh, lower level Pokemon. But when it came to games where you had to rematch over and over again, I really do miss the Versus Seeker. Uh, before we go into the Voltorb or the Electro we just missed, let's talk about Manetric here. This evolves from that Electric Pokemon we saw back in his own gym, actually. At level 26, pure electric type from Gen 3, so it's weak to ground. Magnetric's got some really high speed and some really good special attack. For is relatively uninteresting as Electric themselves is. I think Magnetric can be very much worth the time. Uh, and starting from Gen 4 beyond, if memory serves, you get some decent move sets out of it. Uh, so this is one I can recommend. Uh, whereas as for what they've had, uh, the Electrode had Static Roots Ability, Thunder Wave, Double Team, Thunderbolt, and Explosion. Uh, the Manetric had Static, a Pineapple Berry, Natural Gift, Discharge, Thunder Wave, and an Overheat. The Magnezone had Magnet Pull, Thunderbolt, Magnet Rise, Double Team, and Mirror Shot. And this Pachirisu has Pickup, weird to have that in battle. Quick Attack, Sweet Kiss, Super Fang, and Discharge. Pachirisu is an Electric type added in Gen 4. It's sort of the Rattata of sorts for the Gen, barring Bidoof. Pure Electric type, so it's weak to ground. Pachirisu, for being a single stage Pokemon, has some decently high speed and special defense, but otherwise there's not really much of note to it. It's cute, but it doesn't evolve, so it's mostly probably going to be used for HMs in my experience. It's okay. I, I guess pickup on its own isn't too bad of an ability if you're just grabbing one of them early in the game and just having it with you until you fill out your team. Because that can at least get you some decent items here and there. Uh, otherwise you're getting it for Runaway, which... Uh, not my biggest interest overall. Some of the choices they give for new Pokemon in the rematches are really inspired when it comes to, like, integrating the later two gens into the gym later teams. But some of them are just bizarre, as, as you can see with Pachirisu. Oh no, you are very strong. But I'll repay my debt someday. <laughs> no, you're not. Halfway there, just about. Time for us to rematch Erica, who you can call on Sunday mornings. I should note, I've said you can call them, like, I, I forget if I mentioned this last part or not, because I recorded that two days ago now. Uh, you can stack all of them in the gym at once. Hello. Oh, hiya, what's up? Things are sweet over here. I've got some free time right now. Would you like to meet for a battle or something? You know it. Yay, I'm happy. I've got another thing to look forward to now. I'll be waiting at the Fighting Dojo in Saffron. So if you want to, you can just wait and build up all their times and just have 16 gym leaders here ready for you. How are you? Good to see you again. This place really doesn't suit me, but let's ignore that in battle. Oh, poor Erica. Your team is lacking against even just a uh, Typhlosion. Starting off, though, she's got a new Pokemon. She's going to be throwing out Shift Tree. This is the final stage of the Seedot Pokemon we saw several stages ago, evolving from the previous stage with a Leaf Stone. Grass Dark type, meaning it is weak to fighting, flying, poison, bug, fire, ice, and eventually fairy. Bug is a four times weakness, which is very rare. Shift Tree's got some decently high attack stats, and the HP isn't awful. But for a third stage evolution, I'd usually like to see at least one stat over 100. And from memory, with the amount of weakness that it has, its learn set isn't exactly the most optimum. I've used one before, but it's not much to my tastes. Unlike Tangrowth, which evolves from Tangela when it levels up knowing Ancient Power. Pure grass type, so it's weak to flying, poison, bug, fire, and ice. High HP, high physical attack, high physical defense, even high special attack. The biggest weakness with this is that it can't take much of a special hit and it's very slow. This made Tangela overall worth using, especially because it has a good learn set. As for what moves these Pokemon have had, the Shift Tree had Chlorophyll for its ability. Leaf Storm, Sucker Punch, Sunny Day, and Explosion. Uh, the Tangrowth had Chlorophyll, Swords Dance, Power Whip, Rock Slide, and Earthquake. The Victory Bell had Chlorophyll, Natural Gift, Sludge Bomb, Leaf Storm, and Leaf Blade, and this Rose Raid has Natural Cure, Weather Ball, Energy Ball, Sludge Bomb, and Stun Spore. Uh, Rose Raid evolves from Ros Rosalia when you use a Shiny Stone on it. Uh, grass Poison type, so it's weak to Flying, Fire, Psychic, and Ice. Rose Raid has high special attack and defense, and is decently fast on top of that. 
Rosalia was good. Rose Raid when it was added in Gen 4 just made that line so much more useful. I love it a lot. The biggest weakness of it, again, is that it's grass type in some form, so its learn set can be a little iffy to work with, but out of a lot of the grass types, it's probably one of my favorites. And Erica's Blossom has Sunny Day, Solar Beam, Giga Dream, Attract, and Chlorophyll. And uh, her jump off, get this, has Chlorophyll. U-Turn, Memento, Sleep Powder, and Giga Drain. Erica's not much to write home about in this battle. You've grown even stronger. Although that's mostly because I chose the Fire Starter. If you chose uh, the Water Starter in the game, maybe she'll be more of a challenge. Now it's time for us to call up Janine, who you can call up any time during the day on Mondays. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello, what are you up to? I'm just fine, thanks. I can hear you clearly now. Say, my schedule just opened up. Would you like to meet for a battle or something? Sure. Super, I'm burning up, ready to fight. I'll be waiting for you at the Fighting Dojo in Saffron. I should note, if you call them when they're not available to actually be battled, uh, they'll just tell you when you can call them back for a battle. I can't use my ninja technique, but I won't let you win. So that problem that Erica had where a single type can really just kind of destroy her team, the same more or less applies to Janine. A psychic type or fire type can really take her down. Starting off, she used her Crobat with Inner Focus for its ability, Heat Wave, Cross Poison, Confuse Ray, and U-Turn. Next, she's throwing out a new Pokemon. This is Drapion. This evolves from that Scorupy we saw a while back at level 40. Poison Dark type, so it's weak exclusively to ground and immune to Psychic, which is really neat. High physical defense, decently high attack and speed. This is a good Pokemon to keep around. Some of its learn set isn't exactly ideal when it was originally introduced, but it's perfectly usable. I like this Pokemon a lot. Uh, and it has some good learning type range for its moves and memory serves, because I think uh, it can learn most of the Fang type moves, so you can get some good coverage with it. Whether or not that's me remembering recent games or not is uh, up for debate, because I sometimes just get my gens crossed. I always did find Drapion's overall body shape weird, though. Like, your spine connects to your head. I don't know why. I'm not usually one to critique Pokemon designs, but something about Drapion's shape in particular always kind of bothered me. With that said, Janine's next Pokemon is also a new one. She's throwing out her Toxicroak. Dry skin for its ability, Cross Chop, Poison Jab, Attract, and Substitute. Attract is a bit of a weird choice to bring to a rematch like this in my eyes, but oh well. Uh, dry skin for the ability reduces the Pokemon's HP at the end of each turn if it's in a harsh sunlight weather condition, but if it's raining, it'll regain half of its HP at the end of a turn, so that can be pretty useful. Toxicroak overall evolves from Crowgunk, I believe we've seen them before in this LP, at level 37. Uh, poison fighting types, so it's weak to Flying, Ground, and Psychic. Psychic's a four times weakness, unfortunately. High physical attack, good special attack, good speed. It's not as good as Drapion at those things, but... It's fine, the fighting subtype is what you're mainly there for, so you can use, like, a lot of the punch moves, I believe. It's neat. Otherwise, Janine's team, uh, Weezing with Level Tate, uh, Thunderbolt, Sludge Bomb, Toxic, and Explosion, Venomoth with Tinted Lens, Psychic, Bug Buzz, Sleep Powder, and Double Team, Ariados with Insomnia, Bounce, Toxic, Swagger, and Nightshade. Not a lot to write home about besides those new Pokemon. Next up, it's time for us to call Sabrina, who you can call on Sunday afternoons. In case I forgot to mention it last time, the time slots are more or less determined in like three or four hour bursts, just about. Hello. Anything new going on with you? I'm the same as usual. Ah, wonderful. I've got some free time right now. Would you like to battle again? Sure. I knew it. That's just like you. I'll see you at the f fighting dojo in Saffron then. Short trip for her compared to basically every other gym leader in the game, huh? I knew you'd come. I had a feeling. What? We promised each other. So it's no surprise. Well, you may be right. Sabrina brings some interesting Pokemon to the table, but it's a lot of stuff we've seen before, like her Alakazam here has Synchronized Gravity, Psychic, Focus Blast, and Energy Ball. The Espeon's got Synchronized, Calm Mind, Psychic, Shadow Ball, and Baton Pass. The Mr. Mime's got Filter, Reflect, Skill Swap, Thunder, and Psychic. Just some Dark Moves can usually take those down. The Jinx has Forewarn, Psychic, Focus Blast, Blizzard, and Perish Song. The big new Pokemon she has is her Gallade here. Steadfast for its ability, Stone Edge, Psycho Cut, Night Slash, and Close Combat. Steadfast raises the speed of the Pokemon if in case you use a move that causes it to flinch. Gallade is a Generation 4 evolution of a Generation 3 Pokemon evolving from Male Curlia when you use a Dawnstone on it. 
Psychic Fighting type, so it's weak to Flying Ghost and eventually Fairy. Gallade's got some really high physical attack and some decent special defense on top of that, and I think from memory it's decently fast. Uh, it's sort of just meant to use the physical psychic moves to symbolize the physical special split in, for the psychic types in a way. I like it a lot. I like it better than the other evolution of that line, honestly. Uh, and her final Pokemon is her Wobbuffet Shadow Tag for its ability Counter, Mirror Coat, Destiny Bond, and Encore. I know. He'll give me a call again sometime. Uh, maybe. We'll see what happens. For now, it's time for us to call up Blaine, who is available on Tuesday afternoons. Hello. Oh, hey, what's wrong? You don't have to worry about me. How are you doing? Oh, hey! You called at just the right time. Want to battle me again? Come on, what do you say? Sure. Oh, hey! Thanks, I'll be waiting for you at the Fighting Dojo in Saffron. Blaine's another case of really easy rematch if you just bring just a single water type like Vaporeon. You keep your word. That's a good thing, kiddo. He also only has one new Pokemon that we haven't seen yet. Starting off, he usually throws out his Torkoal, White Smoke for its ability, Yawn, Sunny Day, Body Slam, and Overheat. Then he's sending out his Camerupt, uh, Solid Rock for its ability, Eruption, Earthquake, Solar Beam, and Sunny Day. His new Pokemon is his Magmortar. Flame Body for its ability, Flame Thrower, Thunderbolt, Low Kick, and Confuse Ray. Flame Body burns foes on contact, but it also makes it, that, makes it so that eggs hatch faster. Magmortar, though, is an interesting Pokemon. It evolves from Magmar when you trade it with a Magmarizer. Uh, pure Fire type, so it's weak to ground, rock, and water. High special attack, good special defense, and even some good physical attack on top of that. It's... It, it made Magmar overall worth having for me, at least. And his final two Pokemon, uh, final three actually, are a Rapidash with Flash Fire, Flutter Blitz, Flutter Blitz, Mega Horn, Quick Attack, and Overheat, a Mag Cargo with Flame Body, Curse, Gyro Ball, Overheat, and Stone Edge, and a Hound Doom with Flash Fire, Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, Shadow Ball, and Sucker Punch. Also, yes, you really should have thought about making this your gym, maybe. I doubt they'd mind having two in one city, right? Right? And thus, it's time for the final rematch against Blue, who you can call on Sunday nights. Hello. Eh, whatever. Don't worry about me. I'm doing peachy over here. I'm just looking for something to do. Want to battle me again? You know it. Whatever. I won't lose to you again, got that. I'll be waiting at the Fighting Dojo in Saffron. So if there's any trainer out of the 16 rematches against the gym leaders you want to be prepared for, it's Blue. Good. Thanks for coming to lose to me. Because Blue's Pokemon are all ridiculously higher leveled. They're all in their high 60s to early 70s. And he's got some new ones too. The Executor had Chlorophyll for its ability, Leaf Storm, Psychic, Explosion, Trick Room. This Rhyperior though has Solid Rock for its ability, Mega Horn, Stone Edge, Thunder Fang, and Earthquake. Solid Rock uh, powers down super effective moves used on it by 25%. Rhyperior evolves from Rhydon when you trade it when it's holding the item Protector. It's a Rock Ground type still, so it's weak to Fighting Ground, Steel, Water, Grass, and Ice, Water, and Grass are four times weaknesses. But it's got some really high HP, some really high physical attack, and some really high physical defense. This thing is a physical tank. With that said, if you just breathe on it lightly with a piece of water, it's probably going to fall down pretty quickly. Even with a 9 level gap, as you can see here. So be wary with that, but I'd say it's worth having around. It has some good 1-hit KO moves as well. I like it a lot. Next up, he's sending out his Arcanine, which has Flash Fire for its ability, Flare Blitz, Extreme Speed, Thunder Fang, and Crunch. But now it's arguably time for his Harvest Pokemon overall. Because uh, in my experience, he usually throws out his Returning Pidgeot last. Uh, the Pidgeot, by the way, when we see that, has Tangled Feet for its ability, Return, Double Team, Air Slash, and Steel Wing. Uh, oh, and I also forgot about the Machamp. Uh, no guard for its ability, Dynamic Punch, Stone Edge, Fling, and Attract. It's the usual Machamp you'll see in places like this. The last Pokemon we haven't talked about for Blue is his Tyranitar. This one in particular has Sandstream for its ability, so it entering the field will automatically kick up a Sandstorm weather effect. Low Kick, Fire Fang, Rock Slide, and Earthquake. Tyranitar evolves from Pupitar, which is the evolution of Larvitar, which we've got back in the uh, Safari Zone at level 55. It's the pseudo-legendary for Gen 2, more or less. Rock Dark type, so it is weak against Fighting Ground, Bug, Steel, Water, Grass, and eventually Fairy. 
Fighting is a four times weakness, but it's also immune to Psychic. Tyranitar's got some high HP, high physical attack, high physical defense, good special attack, and high special defense as well. The weakest stat it has is that it's pretty slow, but there's still a lot of Pokemon slower than it. It is powerful. It can take a shot from more or less anything. It can deal a shot with basically anything it's got. Watch out for one of these. With that said, really worth getting one of these. Uh, the biggest trade-off is that if you're playing the original Gen 2, you're not getting one of these until Mount Silver. Uh, whereas in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, you can get one around Gym 5 or 6 at the least. And if you can, I'd really recommend getting one of these. It's great for using strength with, you can use Rock Climb decently on top of other things like Earthquake, Stone Edge, uh, Giga Impact, Hyper Beam eventually. It's a fantastic Pokemon. As I would expect from something that, if I recall, is meant to be sort of a parody of Godzilla. In basically any rematch against Blue, this is probably going to be the Pokemon that gives you the problems out of anything it's got. Not helping things is that this Pokemon eventually got a Mega Evolution, which boosted its stats to even more ridiculous proportions, boosting uh, at least its two physical stats and its special defense. I don't get why you give a pseudo-legendary a Mega Evolution, but uh, I, I guess Pokemon Company, you do you. You mostly gave those to popular Pokemon to begin with anyway. Mostly. Mega Beedrill was definitely a choice. Blue, overall, though, it feels to me what most of the rematches should have been. Not just level boosts, but significant changes to their layout to use not only the rest of the Pokemon added in later gens to that type, but to make some genuinely challenging battles. Because everyone else is, by the time you reach being able to do all 16 rematches at least, probably still going to be underleveled for you. Blue is the only one that feels like an appropriate challenge for the point where you can do all 16, and it really feels like they should have just balanced them all around their early to mid 60s and early 70s. It's a weird thing where, again, even with the slight boosts to the level curve here in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, basically no trainers are prepared for you when you reach them in late Johto and early Kanto, barring the Elite Four and Lance, Blue himself and the true final boss at the top of Mount Silver. They could have done so much more to fix this, and it's just a real shame to me. And like I brought up before, making Kanto linear, like I believe there's one ROM hack out there that does, would probably go a long way to help with that too, because you can make an actual level curve. And from what I've heard whispers about with Gen 9, supposedly even though it's open world, you can go to the gyms in any order, the gyms are still going to have a set level curve to them, so you're meant to take on certain ones at certain times, and I'm glad because if it was like this, unless they actively did that system from like Pokemon Origins, where, at least I think, I think that was the name of those OVAs with red, uh, where they actively got different teams with every badge tier you got, more or less, Gen 9 would have just been dead in the water to me on a difficulty curve level alone. Because having that level and difficulty curve is very important for RPGs. I know I've probably said that an obscene amount of times this LP, but every version of Gen 2 is genuinely the worst game in the series with that, partially just thanks to Kanto's existence alone, and it's a shame. Kanto itself had that problem in the original generation. It was in, same with its remakes, uh, thanks to how open in the latter third of Kanto gets before Blaine. And I didn't like it there, Gen 3 onwards is much better about it, if only because they railroad you more with HM use, unfortunately, so you need to do gyms in certain orders. Just as I expected. No wonder you've become the champion. It really took until Gen 5 to really hit that nail. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, my scare tactic doesn't scare you at all! Alright, that's all 16 gym leader rematches. So with that, let's actively head back to Celadon uh, to grab an item I've forgotten to grab for several videos now that some people in the comments are probably like, hey, why haven't you grabbed that yet? Because I forgot to, just plain and simple. You might remember when we were first in Celadon, the sound designer at the Game Freak office said they'd have something for us if we get all 16 badges. So let's go uh, see what they got for us. How you doing over here? I'm the sound designer. I compose music. Wow, you've collected all the Kanto badges already? That's great. I'll give you something cool for that. We get the GB sounds. 
GB is a rectangular thing with a black and white screen that you use to play the original Pokemon. Oh wait, uh, that was a Game Boy. Turn it on and GB sounds like you hear some nostalgic sounds. It's a gadget full of wonder. Try it at various places. There are some places you won't hear classic music, but that's life. So what you get for getting all Kanto badges here is more or less a Game Boy with headphones in it that when you turn it on or replace whatever song you're listening to with sort of its Game Boy version from the original game. I think there's some different sound channel mixing going on here that wasn't in the original game, so it's not one-to-one, -one, uh, at least from my ears at least, but it's cool. There are some songs that don't get remixed, but a surprising amount of them aren't ones that are just exclusive to Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Uh, like the opening movie doesn't get one, the Professor Oak theme doesn't get one. Uh, the GTS and some of the Battle Frontier stuff does get it properly, a little bit. Uh, but you can more or less listen to the entire game like this and it's pretty neat. Uh, but we're not really using this throughout the LP beyond this little section here. As I just don't feel there's much point to it. It's cool though, uh, I'd recommend listening to the original Gold, Silver, and Crystal Game Corner theme because it just sounds so good in that chip tune. But with that, we've done just about everything I care to do before heading to the peak of Mount Silver. With that said, we're not quite ready for what's at the top there all the same. Before you head to Mount Silver properly to head to the final boss of the game, I recommend being at the least in your mid-70s across your team in level. If you're even in the early 60s to mid 60s, like I should be at this point in the original footage, you're probably not going to have a good time up there without using some obscene amount of items. So I recommend doing level grinding. The problem with this again is the Poke Gear system sucks for that. The gym leaders are okay for that overall, but I would just recommend doing random battles in the highest level places you can, like Mount Silver. It'll take some time, but trust me, it's going to be worth the headache it saves down the line. You also could use the rematches against the Elite Four for this, because that is technically level curve-wise before the final boss, but for reasons of things that unlock after you do the true final boss anyway, I'm doing the rematch against the Elite Four and Lance as the final thing in this LP. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, have a great night, take care, and in part 38, we're sort of ending the game, but even then, not really. See you guys then.